Hi, Dr. Kat Fries again from Central New Mexico Community College. In video G here, we're going to finally get to those Sertoli cells. What are they, where are they, and what importance do they have? So the Sertoli cells are also located inside of the walls of the seminiferous tubules, right where those sperm cells are being produced. As a matter of fact, they're needed in order for spermatogenesis to occur. They, are, they have many different names. We can also call them sustentacular cells, sustentocytes. I've even seen different names. I'll more often than not call them either Sertoli cells or sustentacular cells. Now, one thing to really remember about these cells is the presence of tight junctions. And I'll explain the importance of this in just a moment. Um, and the tight junctions are going to therefore create two compartments, the basal compartment and the ad luminal compartment. And let's see what um, is important now about these tight junctions. So here we're looking at a sketch of the wall of uh, a seminiferous tubule. So assume that we take out of a, a chunk out of the wall of a seminiferous tubule like so, and we enlarge that. So then here you can easily recognize your spermatozoa because they already, already have their flagella, which tells you that these must be your diploid spermatogonia. These are your haploid spermatozoa. And here then are the famous tight junctions of your very large Sertoli cells. So these big purple circles here are the nuclei of the Sertoli cells. These are your Sertoli cells. And the Sertoli cells, as you can see, pretty much create or form a mold for the different stages of spermatogenesis. But they're also interconnected here where they form tight junctions, meaning very few things can get through there. And there's a reason for that. So remember, your spermatogonia are going to eventually get ready to enter meiosis and so they will become primary spermatocytes, which are still diploid. So let's add here diploid, diploid. So this primary spermatocyte, remember, is really just a, a copy of a spermatogonium that is now ready to kick into the reduction phase of meiosis. And so at the end of the reduction phase, we end up with two haploid spermato secondary spermatocytes. And one, once they continue with the replication phase, we end up with four haploid spermatids, which when they mature further become spermatozoa. So I'm not sure why they don't have a label here, but these are your spermatozoa. So what do you notice? You notice that there is a switch from being diploid to being haploid. Okay, so a boy is born with these diploid spermatogonia, but he's not going to start producing sperm cells. In other words, he does not go through this process of making these different stages of meiosis until he hits puberty. So between the time he's born and puberty, his body, his immune system, has only seen these diploid spermatogonia. Suddenly at puberty, he now starts to begin cells, these haploid cells that his body has never seen before. And therefore these haploid cells have to be protected from the immune system, that is, from the blood through which the immune system acts. And that is why we have these so-called tight junctions. So the primary spermatocytes must sneak through here somehow. There's mechanisms explained that is well beyond the scope of this class, but they manage, they somehow are allowed to get through there 
to then continue with the meiotic process and create the haploid cells that are literally, literally foreign cells to the boy's body. And so what I have just explained to you now is the blood testis barrier, sometimes referred to as the, the BTB, the blood testis barrier. So those tight junctions of the Sertoli cells, they prevent the blood from reaching those haploid cells. If there was, if there were to be any contact between the blood and the, um, the haploid cells, we would see that literally antigens, I'm sorry, antibodies would be formed against the sperm's antigens and destroy them. So the, the tight junctions create these two compartments in the Sertoli cells that are referred to as the basal compartment, where the spermatogonia are, and then the adluminal compartment, which is the compartment closest to the lumen, where we start to see the haploid cells. Now it's important for the spermatogonia to be present in the basal compartment, which is exposed to the blood, because those spermatogonia must be able to be influenced by hormones um, from that arrive via the blood to trigger or to either prevent spermatogenesis from occurring. And so that's what, where we're heading next. How is spermatogenesis controlled? Now, before we go into the hormonal regulation of spermatogenesis, let's finish up our discussion of the Sertoli cells. So clearly they play a role in providing a medium through, in which the sper spermatogenesis can occur. They also protect the various stages of meiosis so that the blood will not literally attack the haploid cells. In addition, the Sertoli cells provide nutrients. They also produce testicular fluid, which we've brought up before, which is also going to contribute somewhat to the, to the, the semen. And so this is going to help uh, uh, with the transport of the sperm. It's, it's going to be better for the sperm cells to be in this watery testicular fluid. The Sertoli cells also produce something called antigen binding protein, ABP, and also inhibin. We'll talk about those down the road. And finally, they allow for maturation of the sperm cells by getting rid of the extracytoplasm.